So the, the fossil.org website has a whole area that prints the minutes as they appear in the minutes book. But you can do things like you can search for your name, <laughs> or you can search for a, a number, or you can view singings only for a given year. Um, and so this app takes this very many steps further. Uh, but even as they were working on the app, um, it occurred to those of us who had an opportunity to try it out that there were even a lot of other questions that you could ask this minute data if it was in an easily queryable format. So we sort of put this together as kind of random one of looking at some different things. Um, and to make it, uh, but, but in doing that, the, you know, there's a lot of things that come out of looking at the minutes in aggregate like this, taking them all together. Uh, but we also, I think, wanted to include a bunch of instances of what happens when you just look at a single, a single entry for a single scene. Because sometimes there's really great stories and really fascinating things that come out of that too. So we're trying to balance that in this class. Um, stories that data tell and then like story stories. Stories. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and because part of what's, so, what's been great about this project is not just coming up with these questions, but also uh, having the opportunity to just produce the minutes. Yeah. And you just can't believe the things that turn <laughs> in there. You know, you know, mostly it's just uh, leaders and their songs. And here's another question. Who's ever read the minutes book? Just open it up and read. Yeah. At, uh, most people, most singers have opened up the minutes book and read through it. Like There's, all of it? I don't know about who's ever read the whole book. <laughs> I don't know anyone who's ever read the whole book. You <laughs> raised your hand. That's, that. that's the thing that teachers do. You know, I, know. Right. <laughs> I have a book. Nathan thinks he's read through it. This 1995, does that, does that represent the year it went to Shelby doing the minutes as opposed to Mrs. Parker? I think it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that gives yeah. me a. Yeah. And if you look at the. Um, if you look at the, the binding, it also is a year that they went over to a different printer, yeah. a different way of compiling the data, such that it's, it's easy to digitize it. Yeah. Uh, or it's, it's already digital. It's that way, so. Okay. okay. Um, so uh, the, the, the first question that we wanted to know was basically, how many singings are held each year? Um, and it's a pretty easy thing to find out. You just count the number of rows in the database for every year. But what, what, this, what this demonstrates is that there's been a pretty steady and fairly dramatic increase in the number of singings held, or at least that are submitted to the minutes book across this time frame. We see from just under 180 to over, uh, to, to right on, on 280, yeah. And do we know sort of the relationship between singings, I think in particular traditional singings and getting submitted to the minutes book, like there was there a period of time where weren't using the minutes book as much. Definitely. I, last week I remember seeing people refer to the little minutes and the big minutes being like, yep, in South Georgia. Yep, so this data is all drawn from the big minutes, which is yeah. the minutes, it's the minutes and directors that are singles. Um, and <clears throat> it's, and it, it would be another great class actually on the history of how that book even came to be. Um, we'll touch on that just a bit, actually, later with that map. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. I understand. Okay. Um, but yeah, good question. I think a lot of this is due to more singles being held, mm -hmm. is the short answer. Uh, we'll go to the next slide. Um, there's a, there's a, another. Oh, huh? I oh, like one more. <laughs> nope, that was the one. Uh, so this is another interesting one. This is the number of song leaders. Um, mm -hmm. No, it's not. It's the number of songs led. Yeah. Sorry. So uh, I, this is what happens when I inevitably put these things <laughs> together the day that we kind of. But uh, you can see again, like a, fair, like a fairly remarkable increase there from about uh, 14,000 to 23,000. And these are, a lot of these people, some of these, this is songs led. This is songs led. The slides are on with the papers. The papers, right. It says 1.4 thousand. Uh, it's numbers in, in tens of thousands. Oh, in, uh, yeah. Yeah. Part of the problem with this class is that Mark God yeah. is not here. Never includes like the axes. It never tells us, so we have to kind of intuit, <laughs> ask him what you know. We'll, you know, but I promise you, it's it's tens of thousands, one point four ten thousand, which is forty. Pretty sure. Thousands and thousands and ten times thousands. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And again, you see a gradual increase. But if you go over to number of song leaders, you see again an increase. Did I just put the same thing in twice? No. Yeah, but it's not labeled right. So you're just going to have to look at your paper. Sorry, folks. Um, that bottom left one on your paper, mm -hmm. front page, you can see, again, a, an increase. But there's kind of an inflection point. 
where all of a sudden between 2003 and 2004, there's a, a, a pretty remarkable jump in the number of leaders. Who can guess why? Camp started. Camp started. Wow. That's true. Um, but why would camp started lead to an additional 3,000 people leading the song? <laughs> what else happened that year? Oh, Cold Mountain. Cold Mountain. So this is the this is one graph where the Cold Mountain bump shows up. And why would that show up for song leaders but not song for singles? Because they all want to let us. Everyone went 47 on the bottom. Yeah. Well, you know, how long has it started a single? When Cold Mountain was found, not a lot of people saw the movie, went back home, and like, let's have a convention. Right? <laughs> um, maybe someone did. Not a lot of people were like, you know, let's have our singing last an additional three hours and sing another 90 songs. But a lot of people came to a singing, led perhaps one or two songs, so a lot of people stuck around. Um, and that, that's probably, possibly, possibly part of what accounts for that problem. And uh, if you advance the slide. Is there any? Uh, no, sorry, don't yes. advance the slide. Yes, yeah. Is there any guess as to why it would have decreased the trend in the years that, that little bit oh. there? Is there any guess as to why that? There's that the problem. one we were supposed to be looking There's at. There's the one we were supposed to be Oh, yeah, so there it is. Can you guess the best thing you did? No, I don't know. It's, it's, it's so slight that it's hard to say, but maybe it's cold. Let's just call it Cold Mountain for now. <laughs> no, I don't know. Who knows? <clears throat> uh, it's, it, you know, and, and, and looking at data like this, um, it's not necessarily statistics, statistically significant, a slight shift from year to year, but the trend is significant. Um, so, I <laughs> 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 don't really have to say anything about that, but the next one is even more telling. Yeah. 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 So there's a difference though. I may actually basically uh, stay popular. And one note a note about these two charts. What the way that Mark de devised to estimate popularity, it's not um, the number of times the song is led, it's the percentage of all songs led. So this 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 graph accounts for the overall increase of songs led from year to year, it shows a, a relative increase in population. Okay. What does that axis show? Is that, I mean, is that, I know it's percentage, but yeah. how big is the difference actually? Sometimes in these fitted graphs, yeah, the fitted difference graphs of like 0.2% is like. This is, this is, it's gone from point four, a little under 0.4% to almost 0.75% in that, that period there. So it's, it's become almost twice as popular among songs in total, I guess is how you would read that. Yeah, and, uh, and <laughs> by the way, I'm going to see more than that. Anyway, uh, do you want to go back to the maps? I think we talk about the maps. Yeah, start with the other map. Uh, there we go. This was something else that we thought was interesting, that we have a lot of additional ideas for things that you can do with this. And we don't really have the ability to just generate these things automatically right now, because unfortunately, the location of scenes is not uh, encoded in the data in any way that we can uh, utilize it right now. So that's something we're working on. But we started thinking of a bunch of different really interesting questions that you could ask about uh, how these things would work across geography. A really simple question that we could answer without having to do lots of data <laughs> input was, how many scenes were there in each state in some of these years that are represented by this information? So I just went through and very quickly input that information from two representative years, and one was 96, so I just went through the list of scenes held in it, or scheduled for the next year in the 95 months, and then compared that with the uh, list, similar thing for 2013. And so if you look at this, you can see some kind of interesting changes. The most profound difference, if you want to go ahead and, and flip back, uh, and wow. back is, oh. is how many states have scenes. Hold on, can you do that again? Many of those states have one day. Oh, okay. Wow. Uh, that you can see it just light up in, in different areas uh, where there were previously no singings. And now the number of singings in many of these states is not huge. Like you can see there's a lot of ones, twos, and threes, um, even in 2013. But take a look at the uh, difference between, say, Alabama in 1996 and like every other part of the country, essentially, where there are 103 singings there, 41 singings in Georgia. Uh, Mississippi and Texas, of course, have a bunch as well, but not even on that scale. And then look how far out that seems to have spread. You could also, of course, think about countries where scenes are held as well, which was something that, that uh, I, I 
did on this. Uh, some other interesting stories maybe that this is telling that are a bit more complex. And I will, maybe we'll save this for additional you know, one-on-one -on -one question and answer for later that Miles was kind of hitting at was, how many of these singings, you know, Alabama, you'll notice, actually decreased from, was it 103 to 94? Mm -hmm. Well, how many singings were actually called off in that time period? Um, how many other singings were actually started up? Or how many singings just didn't submit minutes in 1996 that are now submitting minutes uh, at this time? So there's actually a little bit more complexity than this probably shows. Uh, but the overall trends, again, that this is representing are really interesting. I want to do some more of this because, like, what if we had a feel for the uh, location of the singing as well as, like, a feel for the key of the song? We could see where, you know, is major popular and where is minor popular. <laughs> that I suspect, you know, would kind of show us some interesting things. Maybe not. Maybe it would just be the same everywhere. But I'm guessing that you could, yeah, that you could find some other types of relationships through this this kind of manipulation of data that we haven't even begun to really scratch the surface on. So, well, stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> but, think then, about other things. Yeah. And towards the end of this class, we want to talk for a minute you know, about ways that we need people's help. Um, and one of the ways is to provide GPS coordinates for singing locations. That's right. Um, so, um, one other song that we, 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 we included, the uh, change in popularity, is Aiken. Okay. And if you want to go ahead, you, there you go. So again, it's hard to see on this. Um, yeah. That's right. Yep, there it is. But, but uh, if, you, if you can see, a little less than 0.1% of all songs led to over 0.6%. And another way to think about that, um, in 1995, it was the 333rd most popular song out of 570, 554. Okay, so bottom half. Now, and in, in, in uh, 2012, it was number 10. It's the 10th most popular. This is the song of all of the songs in the entire songbook. This one has had the most pronounced uh, increase in popularity across the period of time. Yeah. <laughs> you record the most pronounced decrease? Uh, there wasn't one that stood out. There wasn't really one that stood out. Yeah. This, this one really stands out. Yeah. There's a lot of songs that have become more popular. There are songs that have become less popular. But this this is like <laughs> just the one that's the most amazing. Aiken was first in the 91 edition. Aiken was first in the 1991 edition. And so you, you, you do see um, <clears throat> a number of songs that go into that that edition of the songbook that increase in popularity, but not so dramatically as this one. Um, Another, uh, so, so all these, you know, in one way or another point to a kind of growth in singing, which we're all aware of. Um, another way to look at the way that singings perhaps have shifted across this time period is uh, the structure of song lessons. Um, this is something that we've talked about at camp on and off over the years. Um, way back in the 19th century, the arrangement committee would recognize singers for 30, 40 minutes at a time to direct songs by um, the post-war period, by the 50s or 60s, this had sort of settled into each leader being given the opportunity to write two songs. Um, and there's a perception, at least, that the shift of late has been towards one song lessons. So um, we, we, we looked at that. There's three, there, this is the one chart. You can see three smaller charts on, on the corresponding page in your handout. One for 95, one for 2004, and one for 2012. That, um, Show that if you if you take oh and it, it's a little confusing to figure out how to read this. Oh, need show. Mark, yeah. There's, there's a moment need mark. So what this what this shows the the, the 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 from from left to right is just your number of singings held. Okay, so it's 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 showing you you know that that very end of the blue line up at the top is around 180. That's 180 singings. Whereas for the black line, there's about 280 singings that year, which is 2012. Um, a number of zero on the vertical axis means that every song led at that singing was by a leader who had just gotten up to lead that song. So it means there were, in other words, no two song lessons. Um, a number of 0.5, okay, means that the app, that that one out of every two songs was led by a leader that had just gotten up. One out of every two songs. So that means that the average length of a lesson was two songs. Now for the average length of a lesson to be two songs, in all likelihood you're going to have had some three song lessons. 
because if you've ever been to a singing where there's two sung lessons, some leaders will elect to just sing one. So <clears throat> if you look at these curves, you'll see the very bottom, there's, a, there's some singings at zero, and there's some singings with a very, very low number. These are your one sung lesson singings. I keep doing this up here. Okay, then you see very few singings falling into kind of the middle ground, and then a big gradual chunk up in here, and these are your two song lesson singings, where some of them, everyone's singing two songs, others, some people are just choosing to sing one, or perhaps you sing one, you sing two, and get around, and then you sing one. Right, that would be uh, point three, would really be, you go around once on two, once on one. And then these way up here are singings where the average song lesson is like three or more songs long, so those are probably some very small singings. So, a little confusing. Sorry. <laughs> Marcus. Does that take into account singings where you recycle leaders over? That's right. Yeah. It definitely right. does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so if you, if you go around 12 one. times yeah. with your four leaders each leading one, that's a zero. That's a zero. Oh, if okay. you go around once and each leader leads 12 songs, that's like way up there. Okay. 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 Interesting. All right. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Wait, so, so the major trend is that the lines are moving yeah. to the right. That's right. So this is the, the, so the finding, if you will. Yeah, this but, but this is this is what the, what the discovery is that that surprised us. The story that we're told again and again is that two scenes are going from two songs to one song, and that's that's the impression you can get if you just look at the charts lined up on top of each other. That that pushes pushes to the right, or or, or rather, you know, it looks like the average scene is further to the um, on one song. Tell me one more time what the axes are. Okay. This is how many songs per lesson. This is how many singings. So in other words, right here in 1995, you only have um, about five singings where no leader at all led more than two songs in a row. Only about five. You had another set where one or two leaders, maybe an old leader, or maybe the chairperson led two to begin the singing. And everybody else, and everybody else just led one. So where it looks like those lines intersect with the y, the x-axis, is actually where they are running with the x-axis. There's not actually no line there. That's right. So, there, okay. so you should read, ah, this is a line. That makes more sense. This is a line, and this is a line. So there has been a dramatic increase. So here's, yeah, so, that, so instead of saying it's changing, however, from two songs to one, the real change is the addition of new singing <coughs> yeah. with one song lessons. Ah. The singings that used two songs in 1995, these things, they're still there, and they're still using two songs. What you do see is a gradual falling down of that line, meaning that maybe some of these singings that used to get around once on two songs, now you get around once on two and then go around again, or at least part of the way around, singing just one song or something like that, or maybe more leaders are choosing to sing one. Yeah, Emma. Do you think accounting for the increase of leaders would change this part at all? If there are like more leaders? Have singing they rather instead they only one song or you mean like you like percentage of actual leaders instead of number of leaders? Yeah. So, so this 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 I don't know how the the number of leaders would relate to this. I know I've been to singing, so I went to a singing upstate New York once where we got around five or six times, right, and only led one song <coughs> each time. So we only had 11 leaders at that singing, but we did one song lessons the whole way through. I've also been at, at songs where we sang, singings where we sang two song lessons and didn't get around to the class, right? So you should all come to my arranging committee class tomorrow or th Thursday or more on that. But like, you know, I think that that relationship is complex. And what, what this points to really is that it has more to do with what singings decide to do when they're found. Once a singing is committed to two song lessons, they generally stick with it. It seems. I mean, it would be interesting to look at the data because I'm sure there would be a uh, major difference prior to the time we're looking at. Yeah. Because before, you know, that, uh, Dan and Karen can probably tell us a better time frame, but before a certain time, basically every singing was two song lessons, right? That, that, yeah. So that happened before 1995. Right. Basically, so this was sure. Yeah. Um, how how does how does your data in terms of keeping track of when people lead together? Mm -hmm. Does that count as a different person? So, a different configuration? yeah, the, the, the way that, that that sort of throws off the data, it sort of doesn't. Um, the, the person who gets up and sings with the singer and then sits down and the singer continues to sing another song, um, it will count 
that as a two song lesson and a one song lesson, in other words. So it'll be two new songs, two new leaders and one old leader. Um, but we do think that it probably does mess that up a little bit. What we think is that in all likelihood we're slightly under-representing the number of two song lessons. Let's hold off the yeah, any other discussion on this, maybe we'll be better. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on, there's lots to lots go, lots of good stuff. Yeah. Thanks, Do you want to talk about the, these memorial things? Sure. Well, sure. Um, yeah. I'll just talk about these briefly because, you know, we were mentioning that uh, in with all of this math and numbers and data, there's also lots of other stories uh, that the minutes are telling that are sometimes really interesting. Uh, we have printed for you here from the 1880 minutes of the Chattahoochee Convention. Now, sometimes we forget that a lot of what's in the minutes is actually not just names and numbers, but proceedings of things that may have happened, uh, reports from different committees, uh, and in particular, the reports from memorial committees can be really interesting and insightful. Uh, in terms of historical information, um, as well as to just kind of give you a sense of what these people were like a little bit. Uh, this is great for both of those things, I think. If you want to read through this, I would definitely recommend this. This is actually uh, on the, let's see, 1880, because B.F. White had died in 1879, so they were memorializing B.F. White at this convention, and the uh, account of his life is interesting from a historical standpoint. I'll let you pursue that. I'm really fascinated by the sort of stereotypes that this seems to completely demolish about the people who were using or who were participating in Sacred Heart being like unschooled, rural, you know, people who couldn't read and write. Read this. Read this and tell me if you don't think the uh, eloquence and the elevated kind of language that this represents is, is a little bit different than sometimes I think the stereotype that we get. A lot of really amazing and great things um, that you can find. Can I give a couple of examples that are a little bit more recent? Uh, we've also found some things that are really hilarious. Where is um, the next page? Okay, so on the next page, uh, you've got one from 1995, and it's too bad Jeanette is not here. She was here at the adult. She's probably not here. Yeah, a little bit better. better. Uh, but you can read in the 95 minutes from Harmony Primitive Baptist Church. The annual all-day singing was held the third Sunday in November at Harmony Primitive Baptist Church. The traditional window opening was performed by Jimmy Denny. In a break with tradition, Jeanette DePoy was designated to crawl through the window and unlock the church doors. Judy Minson called the class to order by leaving sign on page. <laughs> so, Jeanette actually explained to us that not only this, she has, still has scars because apparently the window, the traditional or non-traditional window crawling was uh, ill-fated in some respects. So there's even more <laughs> behind some of these stories. Uh, Jesse, yeah, sure. t tell them about the other category of call here. So we just, so um, I think Nathan happened upon this um, incident of uh, someone playing on the harmonica at a singing in 1997, M.B. Forbes, who was, was Eugene Forbes' brother. Mm. Um, performed, or played, let's say, 164 and 59 on his harmonica, then later in the singing he played Wildwood Flower, 452, and Silent Night, all on his harmonica. <laughs> um, and so I, 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 asked, I asked Eugene about this. Um, Eugene's brother was, uh, was sort of, was mentally and physically uh, disabled, and he um, was, however, very, very musical. He only had one arm, um, but in addition to playing the harmonica, he could play the banjo and the guitar with one hand, um, you know, doing chords and picking with the same hand. Um, and when he came to singing, he liked to play on the harmonica, and Eugene, having not shown him this, re specifically recalled him playing Wildwood Flower, um, but said that often when he played a song from the second half, the class would sing along with it. <laughs> so, wonderful. But, you know, this made me, of course, type the word harmonica in, and I turned up another uh, two instances of harmonica playing at a Sacred Harp singing as recorded in the minutes, and both of these are at the Elmore Center singing in Gordo, Alabama. <laughs> um, so you, you see Tony Smith calling the class back to order and introducing Gary Farley, who played Amazing Grace on the harmonica. Um, two years later, the same singing. We have him playing with the harmonica for the class, doesn't specify what tune, uh, but he then led Wondrous Cross, 447. Um, and though Guy, Gary Farley did attend the Elmore Center singing in 2011, the ministry at least do not record him as having played on the line. If you're going to travel to Gordo, just yeah. see that. Just be prepared. <laughs> you might want to call it. I want to show you there was no harmonica. Oh, okay. Well, there you have it. So we don't know. We don't know so about that. Let me tell one other story yeah. really quick about that. Because, of course, there's, I mean, there's a trillion things. We can come from croquet games. And 
Yeah. Next time, we'll actually, some yeah, horrible ask things. That later, ask us about some too, cases but, uh, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, sad things, national things, all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff you can mm -hmm. read about. But I will take one. Maybe somebody was actually there because I would love to hear more about this. Uh, from the Minnesota State Convention in 2002, to the puzzlement and delight of all, Reverend Doug Donnelly rearranged the front benches to seat the party for the surprise wedding of Matt Wells and Laura Anderson. After the applause and laughter subsided, he conducted a brief and beautiful ceremony exchanging vows and rings. The class celebrated the couple's union by singing with them Present Joys, led by Jeff Shepard. I actually, I actually just talked to uh, Jane. Rose. Oh, okay. She was telling me about that. She uh -huh. said they decided to get married. It was just a total surprise for the rest of the class. They came in and... Can you imagine? Oh. <laughs> 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 Minnesota. Minnesota. She said they did it and they were singing. Oh, wow. oh that's yeah. great. That's great. So anyway. Alright, now back to the math. Back to math. Okay. <laughs> if, you love this, if you'd like to some yeah, lessons, you'll love entropy. How, what time is it, by the way? Does someone know? 537. Great. I've actually got time for six. So okay. it'll be that. Okay. Well, I want, I want to make sure we have time for the app. Oh, so yeah. Like Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, do you want to zoom ahead one or two? I think it's just one. There we go. Okay. So this graph here is, is what this one shows you. Each little x on this chart is one liter. So you're Every all liter, each one of you is, is an x on this chart. <laughs> <laughs> every liter, every liter recorded in the Madison since 1995 is an x on this chart. On the, on the axis from, uh, let's see, left to right, is the number of times, or uh, excuse me, the number of songs you've led. So, shouldn't be surprising to us, most people in the book have led relatively few songs. Most people know in the minutes book. Um, but a number of us have led more songs. Right? A number of us have led. You know, once you, once you get to this area here, and you're looking at, say, 200 songs, um, let's think about that. You know, that's someone who's, who's attended, say, five to seven singings a year across the period, or more in a more compressed time, time frame. Yeah. What's the number of leads and what's the number of uh, songs that they left? Leads is the same as songs left. No, no, so, so if I lead oh, the same song in two singings, that counts twice. Okay, so that's... It's not unique right. songs. It's not unique total songs, songs, it's total songs. Total songs. Number of songs, yes. Yeah. Number of times leading a song. Okay. Yeah. Any song. Yeah. yeah, good question. Yeah. Um, Wait a minute, this says a low entropy... Oh. Well, hang on. Wait for entropy, we're not there. Wait for it. Wait for it. So this is just, all you need here is just to read, you know, this guy right there, who's that? It doesn't say. I know, who is it? Travis Keaton. Is Travis Keaton? Yeah, Travis Keaton. That's Travis Keaton. Who's led somewhere between 2000 and 2500. Who's this? Jeff Shepard. Jeff Shepard. Okay. Okay. I think the next one's eight. No, that's John Plunkett, actually. But anyway. So these are all people, <laughs> right? <laughs> but um, the, the vertical axis is a little more complicated. It's um, this calculation using an algorithm that's used for a number of different purposes that is generally called entropy. And what it means when applied to a leader of sacred pop songs is the degree to which a leader is predictable or random when selecting songs to lead. So a low entropy score is a leader who favors certain songs and returns to those songs again and again. A high entropy score is a singer who could lead and, uh, and elects to lead a different song just about every time. Okay? So, <clears throat> uh, yeah, go ahead one slide. That's beautiful. It's, a, it's the best looking chart. So we picked four people. <laughs> Uh, you already saw, this is John Plunkett. John Plunkett has the highest entropy score of anyone, which should not surprise you. Second highest entropy score, David Iyer. David Iyer, second highest entropy score, right up there. Um, so we picked, we picked him for that reason. Um, we picked a, a leader named Lamar Smith, who was a Lookout Mountain, Sand Mountain? Pine Grove. Pine Grove singer. Um, who, you, you know, you can see is only uh, on the chart for about 300 songs, but a lot of that is because he passed away. Um, relatively early in the period from 95 to 2012. Um, but you can see, even among his cohort, and even among his group of singers, he has remarkably low entropy, meaning that he really favored the songs that he favored. 
Um, we took uh, Harrison Priel as an example of a person who's led a really highly exceptional number of songs uh, across the period, but who again has very low entropy. And then we picked Lonnie, who has slightly low entropy, but but you know if you take his kind of larger group, it's within the within the mainstream. <clears throat> Let me just interject really quickly that at the adult camp, everybody was like thinking of this as a competition. <laughs> this is not, not a competition. That's not at all. It's how to describe like the character of somebody as a singer. You know, do they like a diverse number of songs? Do they like maybe one or more songs? We love people who you know have maybe not that many songs that they lead. So that's not. Yeah, really and, and, and it, it can't possibly <laughs> be the case that 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 low entropy is back and Harrison yeah, Friel has low entropy. Exactly. Because exactly. everyone loved to see Harrison Lee. Sure. Exactly. And loved him as a person. Yes. <laughs> we'll talk about that okay, so Oh yes. So we'll hang on to that. Oh yes. yeah. Hang yes. on to that. Hang on nice. to that. Yeah. Yes. Sure we got time. Is there any structure given to the song? So like if some, two people who have the same amount and one of them every time they lead They pick a crazy they, song. No, no, like no. they have their two if if we take two people and have the same number of songs, yes. does it matter if their songs are more similar or not? Like if someone always leads Wyndham and mm. and like Detroit, and then as opposed to someone who always leads Happy Land and Claremont, like uh, great right question. Right. So oh. no, at this point that actually is not taken into account okay. entropy, but we have another stat. So let's that, hurry so we can get okay. so let's try this. So okay, we'll just look at the, this. This is another way to visualize entropy. Okay, this is the songbook. Okay, uh -huh. um, it's not exactly page number; mm -hmm. it's song index. So this is 554 because it's the Last song in the book is actually on page 573. And this is one. one is Bethel, two is you don't uh, one is Samaria, two is Bethel. Or, this is an outrage. You, know? you don't have to. <laughs> yeah, well, I, 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 again, take it up with um, the data. The data doesn't count those three songs in the rudiments as songs. Okay, again, no, let's not on the <laughs> They do this not. is more interesting. Oh. <laughs> so when you look at John Plunkett's distribution, what do you notice? <laughs> well, sort of. So again, this is, so this is this is lead count. So 45 times, the man has led um, Albion. Yeah. Albion, 45 times. However, he's led a total of 1,630 times. <laughs> okay. He's Can I just flip to the next one to show the difference? Yeah, go one? ahead and flip. This is Lamar Smith. Okay, go back to John. And anybody who knew him could tell oh, him. Okay. 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 okay, so a few little spikes here, but there's a whole lot of, first of all, this blue is almost solid. John has led 402 of the songs in the book across this period. Okay, a lot yeah. of them he's only led once. Another one he's only led twice. Another one he's only led three times. And what are the peaks? The peaks are Albion, which we asked him is his favorite opening song at the start of singing. Next is 62, closing song. Okay? Is the, the first favorite that comes up is 467, which is only led 24 times, which is less than twice a year across this period. Okay? So if you take out his top five songs, the rest is 91.7% of all his songs. In contrast, Lamar Smith. His top three songs account for all about 6.6% .6 of the songs that he led in that period. Um, and, and again, anyone who knew him could tell you. 76 on the bottom, 36 on the bottom, 343. Um, so just to see a couple of others. This is Harrison. Um, we were at adult camp and Cassie was in here. And Cassie just went through and named, named each song <laughs> that there was a spike. Because again, he, people with low entropy scores are the people where the, that connection between singer and song is, is just fixed in, in everyone's mind who's singing that. Um, and if you go ahead to Lonnie, this is what, what a lot of singers who've led a lot of music look like. Uh, they, lead, they lead a number of songs. There's a, a, a good number that they've only led once, twice, maybe five times that they like but they don't return to again and again. But there's also favorites. This, of course, is, is, uh, is 225. Um, wow. So, we'll try to run through this part real fast so we can get the guessing game. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. 
Actually, just say this. You can also apply this idea to singings. Have they become more or less entropic? That's all. It's just meaning, do our singings cover all the songs in the book, or do they cover a limited selection? And slight, but relative, but we think significant change in the direction of yes, they cover all the songs in the book. Um, and related to that, the most popular songs are slightly less popular than they used to be, <laughs> meaning, but more more pronounced than that. If you go ahead, one more. The the bottom 100 songs are almost three times as popular as they were in 1995. This, I think, you could point, and this is just hypothetical, you could point to the best of the ungreatest hits classes, taught several times at camp. You could also point to the publication of statistics and views. I know several people who every year are real excited to see which songs weren't let at all the previous year, and if they think they're any good, they leave those songs. So enough people start doing that, and you get a chart like this. Uh, I have another theory that it's a lot of young people singing. About, huh. I mean, I think you young people are are just more apt to have the confidence to jump up there and lead something that you so know. Never that's, really really yeah. I think it's, that's really interesting. I think it's the why you have grown up in like singing in the South and other places like totally different. Uh -huh. Like because up there you don't have the like the same tradition. So there might be something to that, songs. but the two leaders who lead the most songs in the book are southern leaders. Yeah. You know. Right. Um, so it's 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 mm. there may be you know I think I think where you sing is is, is right. probably right. factor and we'll right. get some more of that. We'll be able to give you an interview now for the country next year. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> All right. Let's move ahead. Yeah. Okay. So what's okay. this? Yeah. <laughs> what on earth is that? <laughs> okay. Very quickly, and I apologize for people that would like to know to really understand what this is. Um, <laughs> This is a way of, of, of grouping songs together without looking at the songs themselves. This is completely blind to the songs themselves and any characteristics they may have, whether it's their musical or uh, textual characteristics. All that this does is it looks at, um, for every pair of songs, are there leaders that lead them both? Are there leaders that lead neither? Are there leaders that lead one or not the other? Similarly, for every two leaders, <laughs> do this connection. Run that matrix across the entire database of songs and singers, and then do a whole lot more stuff. <laughs> the uh, okay. guy actually at uh, the other camp explained this in a really great way. It's basically the same way that Netflix predicts what kind of movie to say you might want to watch. A computer does it. You know, nobody says, oh, I'm in. They love this. A computer just looks at what other people with similar taste, in a way, based on what you've watched. So this does it for what people lead. Do the same two people lead a certain couple of songs all the time, and then it comes up with these connections. Yeah. So if the same leaders like certain songs, also if the same leaders don't like certain yeah. songs, so you yeah. could, you could, they get closer together. You like to lead this, you, might you may this. also. <laughs> like sure. Sure. Yeah. 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 that any grouping of songs will have it make any sense to us at all. Yeah. Right? Because again, it's completely blind. It's yeah. the same way sometimes on Netflix, you're like, yeah. I don't want to watch that movie. <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 That's for some reason. But we yeah. thought we'd look, look at these and, and play a game called Name That Song Tree. So <laughs> this is a little hard to read, but, but um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you that th this just gives the number. I'll read the names, and you can name that song tree. So once again, remember, a computer just spit out this. It said that the computer knows nothing about these songs. Something the that. that ties these songs together, and then we have to see what it is. And when we see what it is, by the way, we're not identifying the reason that they're grouped together. We're interpreting it. Yeah. In fact, the reason it's come, that they, they're put together is because of the behavior of all leaders over this period. There's probably many reasons. But just for kids. Okay, so okay, how ready? this works again when they're closer together in the uh, branching system? That means yeah. they have more and, mutual information. And these charts, that these these particular, they have more mutual information. It's the okay. name for this is mutual information. Two songs um, right next to each other are, are likely very to be led to by the same person. Or not led or by not the same people, right? And less likely to have a leader who leads one but not the other. <laughs> throw that away. Throw that away. Remember this and, and try to name questions. After. Try to name the songs. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and this is, these are all close together. Each of these charts are a group of songs That's close together. That's zoomed in on the giant This is zoomed way in. Okay. Zoomed okay. Way in. Okay. 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 Corinth. Yeah. Parting hand. Let us sing. Holy manna. Bound for Canaan. Hallelujah. Uh, can't read that one. 36 on the bottom. 36 on the bottom, so uh, 95th. 
but count has that's how many songs live since '95, so you can see. And then and you it can doesn't also matter say, what the song is if they sing the same song every time. Oh or yeah, no, this isn't the entropy. This is just song count. Okay. Um, and if you kind of pull down on any list of stuff, it'll pop up that search bar at the top. So if I type in summers, then you'll pop up, um, and we can go straight to you and your stats. Um, this is it sorted by entropy. Thank you. So you can see plunk it up at the top there. Uh -huh. um, and I don't know if Jesse ever said that entropy is normalized from zero to one. That's right. Yeah. So so because plunk it is at almost 0.9, that's the high entropy score. Um, so here's me. This is what happens when you select a person's name in a list or search for somebody. Um, so this, I can look through everything I've done. I started singing in 2004 and then got up the courage to lead in 2005. And if you were to keep scrolling. But then also a cool thing that we've done is up in the corner there it says graph. Uh -huh. So if you press that, it shows each year and how many singings I've been to. And I just uh -huh. want to point out that Jesse and I started dating in September of this year. <laughs> Yeah. One of the nice miles things. away for you know five or six years now. 
one of the nice things about the way the data is set up is that it distinguishes between singing locations and singing. So we're able to preserve that difference. So what, we, what we're more interested in, in fact, than where a singing's held in a particular year is any location where a singing's been held since 1995, or even earlier. If you, if you okay. happen to live next door to the place where your singing was held in 96, but hasn't been held there since, that's, that's great. Okay. Well, give, give us those GPS points. Okay. You're also doing a service to singers going to your scene, because I've had yeah. to... Well, we'll be able to use this data to make a, 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 a Google map yeah. page, for example. Um, the other thing is, a lot of people have noted that their name is spelt differently and yeah. in different things. So we already have a form, and we'll, we'll send a list, a, a link out to this to you all, um, where you can enter either misspellings or alternate spellings. Some people have, like I have, Jesse Carlsberg, Jesse P. Carlsberg, Jesse Perlman Carlsberg, um, as well as things like many misspellings of my name. So you can distinguish between those, but we'll, 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 we'll be able to use that information to at least join that. Stuff for the purpose of running some of these things. Yeah. Will that be sent directly or on, on one of the listservs? It's gonna on the discussions listserv. Um, it has. It has. And what we what we haven't done yet is kind of make a proper website for this. Mm -hmm. um, it'll be up there. But we're also gonna we're gonna I think post some of this stuff to singings shortly. Mm -hmm. We haven't done that yet. Um, yeah. That's, Nathan. I was just going to say that we're running into here, so let's, yes, sir, uh, let's I would invite us to uh, ask any questions you may have when we're available, which is throughout the duration of the camp. And appreciate your cooperation. And is it a one second question? One second question. When's the Android app coming? That's good. Right. <laughs> <laughs>